Crawford. Three special agents will have been eliminated by alien intelligence. By the end of this assignment, only one will have fulfilled tonight's mission to become the master spy. With Jenny Lee Wright as the inscrutable Miss Moneypacker, here now is the man in control, your resident spy master, William Franklin. Good evening. The one special agent we fear most of all is the one who watches us for 24 hours of a day, reports all our movements from the Orkneys to the Scilly Isles. He hovers 290 miles over our head, and he looks like this. He has one eye, and it's the mission for three special agents this evening to close it. Money Packer, could we have the first agent in for screening? With pleasure, Major. Special Agent Nigel Wingate is a 39-year-old optician. He lives in Ringwood in Hampshire. Wingate, good to have you with us. And you, sir. I've been through your dossier. One of your most fascinating things is an ambition as yet unfulfilled, which is to make that journey the full length of the Trans-Siberian Railway. Now, why particularly? Well, because it's a long way, and I like railway trains. And so yes. I thought, well, it's, if it's the longest train I can, I can get on, it would be a marvellous way of seeing an enormous tract of... some of which is very beautiful, although some of which I understand is not so pretty. The tundra. That's right. Not the most attractive area. Uh, where would you expect to start from? Uh, well, um, from Bournemouth. <laughs> because that's uh, where I come from. And, um, but then I would go to London. And yes, that would be a fascinating journey. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, then I would go down to, Vic to uh, Victoria. Yes, get us over. into the deep heart belt of Europe. That's it. And then I think that it goes, you have to go to Paris. Yes. Or maybe Brussels. Yes. And then across through East Germany to Moscow, which is really where the Trans-Siberian Railway starts. Omsk, Tomsk. And, yes. And points oh, yes. East? Uh, east. Ending up at? Uh, well, I've just discovered that, in fact, you can end up at, at Hong Kong, having gone through Red China. Um, That's, in fact, how my relations in the 30s used to come back. They were sent back to school from Shanghai and Hong Kong, from Vladivostok, 12 days, and a great deal of this went on on the windows because the they tended to steam up a lot. So you looked at steamy windows for about eight days and there was a lot of borscht about. Yes. I think what it probably required was a great deal of deviousness, which is in fact what our department specializes in, which leads me fairly neatly into a test of your own deviousness. I want you to imagine that you're in a downtown rather sleazy bar in where else but Casablanca, and you're there to meet a double agent to hand over this top secret tape recording. Suddenly you hear sirens, security guards are on the way. You recognize the sound for what it is. You must not be caught with that tape recording red-handed. You must hide it somewhere on that tray so that they don't suspect it's there at all. Right? The pressure's on you. The siren's going. You hear them arrive. The doors are slamming. Move. Well, you, you want me to do it? Yes, I do oh, indeed. Action speaks much louder than the proverbial. The heavy feet are sounding down the passage. Shandy's doing well. Good. You, the seconds are ticking away. The heavies are very near that door. In a minute, there might be a splintering door. And... I think you just saved yourself <laughs> going in the slammer <laughs> simply by the head on the drink. Mm, I think I thought of an easier way of doing there it. There probably then. might be a slightly briefer way. A money packer, would you like to give your barmaid routine? Certainly, Major. Thank you. Never seen anything handled more adroitly? <laughs> you should see what she gets on the empties. <laughs> now, recently this came into our hands. Yeah. Idea what it is. May I handle it? Yes, do by all means. It's uh, a hollow cylinder containing 
A secret message, I suspect. Yes, you are ahead of us, actually. You may read the secret message. I was going to ask you what you thought that was, but in fact... Well, I could have told you it was a hollow metal cylinder. Yes. Made, <laughs> made by the, uh, an organisation that just makes hollow metal cylinders. They probably make other things, too. Yes, but do you think there's much of a call for those? Um, only as a baton for uh, a relay race. You're very quick. You were playing me along, weren't you? You knew all the time. I'd like you to uh, bear that in mind. Think about it yes. while Money Packer introduces our next agent. Thank you, Major. Special Agent De Lucia Isidio comes from Sierra Leone. She's married with one daughter and she now lives in London. Good to have you with us, Isidio. Thank you. Is Sierra Leone all like that? Like me? Yes. Of course. You were a nurse, weren't you? Yes. Did you do your nursing training in Sierra Leone? No, I did it over here. Now, I want to ask you about your name, because it's a, a beautiful name. It's an exotic name, De Lucia Isidio. Have there been lots of connotations of that since you arrived in England? Yeah, sometimes. What sort of pronunciations do you get? Oh, they call it the Isidio, they call Isidio or Isidio. <laughs> yes. And the De Lucia. Well, they can't pronounce it. I'm surprised you can. Yeah, but uh, is it basically French by extraction? <laughs> oh, yes, De Lucia is French. And it means delightful, which I am. Yes, I don't think there's any, <laughs> nobody would question that. In fact, if you get into the department, Money Packer will have to look to her laurel. <laughs> uh, sorry about that, Money Packer. For a moment, disloyalty crept in. <laughs> now, would you say that you were devious? Yes, what I want to be. Yes, well, I want you to be now. Oh. This is how you can survive. I want you to imagine oh, that you're in a downtown bar in Casablanca. You're meeting a double agent there to hand over a top-secret tape recording. Suddenly you hear sirens outside, the sound of what you know is security guards, because you're highly trained. You're honed, to any of the, honed into any of those noises. You immediately know that you have to get rid of that, but you must hide it on the tray. Mm. Right? Move as fast as you can. Mm. The doors are slamming outside. Mm. You can see the light going around, that sinister overtone. I must hide it on the tray. On the tray. Do anything you like on the tray, with the drinks or anything, but you must hide it. I must hide the heavies it. are coming through the door. The doors of that old studio baker outside, mm. circa 1945, are slamming. Mm. It doesn't matter if it's spoiled, but I must It doesn't matter it. what you do to it. Your life is at stake. Mm. I'll drop it in there. Go on, they mustn't be able to see it. Oh. Well, I'll drop it in the beer. Will they be able to see it? Yeah. Think about it. Do anything oh, you like. No, 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 they'll lift up. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can you imagine yourself in the slammer oh. with those bars across your face for a couple of winters? Well, I chuck you on no, the... No, 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 on the tray. Oh. The tray. We have a system, you see, and you have to use it. Um, on the tray. It's too big to eat, so we decided the only thing was to do something on the... Ah, oh, my Dudana. <laughs> You're very feminine and very delightful, but I'm afraid you wouldn't stand very much chance. In a few moments, I'll show you, in fact, how you stood a better chance. Money Packer, would you give us your Dorchester bar routine? Certainly, Major. <laughs> now, something that came into our hands quite recently was that. Would you like to tell me what it is? A piece of metal. Uh, yes, that was very alert of you. I'd like you <laughs> now to develop the idea of what the piece of metal might be used for. To hide a film. Can yeah. screw those two bits and put a film there. Very or good. Or a secret message. You're absolutely right. Or you can put a poison well, needle there. Well, you could indeed do all those things. Uh, would you like to open it? And There is a coded <laughs> message in there. In fact, I'd like you to open it and find out. What do you think the actual article is, though? While you're looking at the message, just talk to me. Yeah. You mean that? Yes. What, what is that? It? Yes, what is this? I thought it's a metal. It's a silver. But do you think it was just made as that, or do you think it had an intention? Yeah, to hide secret message. <laughs> yes. Yes, that, it, it is, in fact, it is a baton used in relay races for sprinters who want to pass love notes to each other during the race. <laughs> right, now, while you are remembering that, because it's important that you remember it. We'll get Money Packer to introduce our next agent. Thank you, Major. And he is Special Agent John Barnett. He's 27-year-old sales executive. He's married with two sons, and he lives in Essex.
Now, Barnett, good to have you with us, Barnett. Thank you. Now, as somebody who is reasonably knowledgeable about jewellery, what would you say is the least popular of precious stones today? Possibly the amethyst. Is there a reason for that? Mm, all stones tend to change through a period of time. Uh, one stone will go through a phase, then that will stop and another stone will become more popular. The is only one that remains always popular is diamond. Yes, is it to do with fashion as diamond. much as with the Very actual so. value of them? Very much so, fashion. Now, I want you to imagine a predicament that you found yourself in. You've arranged to meet another undercover agent on a train leaving from Manchester, and you've agreed, as you don't know each other, you'll wear a white rosette in your lapel, and he'll wear a white rosette, naturally. When you get on the train, there's 20 young tearaways with red rosettes. You have a feeling that you're not as welcome as you'd like to be. How are you going to talk yourself out of what could be a dodgy moment? Um, I think possibly one of the best ways would be to get a, a tin of spray paint. Change the colour of the rose. Yes, that's um, a very good idea, but they're not always handy, actually, on the 1027 leaving Manchester. It's quite difficult to get a sandwich. True. So to get a tin of spray paint could be very tricky. I don't know, because if you're talking about 20 tearaways with a red rosette, they're possibly going to a football match, and most of those carry tins of spray paint. Oh, very. I like that. I like that. It's a kind of deviousness that appeals to me. And this is what you'll require now, because you're in a downtown sleazy bar in Casablanca, and you're going to meet a double agent to hand over this top-secret tape recording. Mm. Suddenly, you hear sirens, security guards are on the way. You recognize the sound instantly. You must not be caught with that red-handed on you. You have to lose it. You have to hide it on that tray somewhere so that anybody coming in doesn't even imagine there's a tape recording there. Okay, move. <laughs> Press on. Yes. I think we have to give you pretty good marks for that. I think only if we hang, uh, hold it up to the Moroccan light will we necessarily see it. That's very, very good. Uh, money packer, last orders. Certainly, Major. Thank you. Wiggle has never gone, has it, Money Pack? I have told you about that. Now, this has arrived in our department. What would you say it was? It could be one of several things. It could be an item bringing a secret message. It could open. Uh, it could also be a baton used for relay racing. You managed to get the two all in one, haven't you? In fact, it has a coded message in it. Would you like to open it? Yes. Just take a look at it. Now, I'd like you to rejoin your colleagues and think about that coded message because it's essential to the success of your mission this evening. Would you like to join them? <laughs> Uranus 6 is an enemy surveillance satellite watching us night and day. It provides a bird's eye view of our defense installations, our strike weaponry, and other weapons that we would prefer to keep secret. Now, shooting it out of the sky would only result in our opponents shooting down the one we use to keep a watch on them. So there is, as it were, a stalemate in the sky. But there is one man who could tip the balance in our favor. He's Alberto Gomez, probably the greatest living authority on laser beam projection. Now, Gourmet's claims that by transmitting a powerful light source directly into the eye of the satellite, we can render it virtually useless. This simulated action shows the blinding effect of the laser beam on the satellite's camera. And as long as we're armed with this jamming device, the peeping Tom in space is no longer able to peep. And now for the bad news. The special courier to whom Gourmet's delivered the blueprint of his laser beam projector boarded a flight from Montevideo 10 days ago and has not been heard of since. Uh, your mission is to find the missing courier and recover the vital blueprint before it falls into unfriendly hands. Money Packer will point you in the right direction. Thank you, Major. Like most special couriers, our man in Montevideo always travels light. And when his flight arrived at his destination in Athens, this coded message was found inside his few belongings. It was written on a postcard, and as you can see, it's the message you've already been asked to keep in mind. Now, the significance of the words hot candle can possibly be explained by the picture on the reverse side of the postcard. Now, if the Olympic torch 
is the hot candle that our courier wants us to keep in mind, there might be some connection with the fact that on the same flight from Montevideo were several athletes returning to Europe after competing in international field and track events. Agent Wingate, could you give me any specific interpretation to this message? Any ideas? No, I can't say that there are. Yet. None at the moment. No. Okay. Agent Isidio, could you? About the hot candle. About the hot candle and the uh, Olympic torch. Maybe there is a massacre. And when he said hot candle, that's the revolver. Somebody's going to be killed. Possible? <laughs> Agent Barnett? Possibly the hot candle is referring to the laser. Um, and it's indicating that the person who has got the details is possibly one of those athletes. Uh, interesting, interesting. Actually, it is connected with athletics. And it's because of this apparent connection with the world of athletics that it's been decided on this assignment you'll each assume the covering role of sports correspondence. Now, as a test, the first test for your aptitude, we'd like you to caption some sporting photographs. Now, inside these folders, you'll find a list of captions. We're going to show you a sporting photograph, and we want you to, as quickly as possible, select the most apt caption for the photograph. So here's our first sporting photograph. Have a good look at it, and have a look at the selection of captions you've got. And Agent Wingate, which would you select? Oh, High Jumper sets himself a knotty problem. <laughs> yes, I agree. Lovely headline in the papers. <laughs> Agent Azidio? Angry so Jumper throw a shoe. Sorry, again? Angry show jumper throws a shoe. Not bad, not bad at all. Agent Barnett? Uh, inadequate toilet facilities at three day event. <laughs> Amazing. She's <laughs> <laughs> very up for that poor fellow. Uh, here's our second sporting photograph. Um, Agent uh, Barnett, what would be your caption for that? French cyclist finishes race two laps behind bicycle. <laughs> Excellent, very apt indeed. Agent Wingate. A leading athlete disqualified for using levitation. Mm hmm I think so too, don't you? Well, so far you're proving that you could be quite good at sports correspondence, but sustaining your cover under the eagle eyes of Anarchy International will be your severest test in this assignment. So we must now subject you to the sort of rigorous interrogation you will receive if you arouse their suspicions. Agent Wingate, would you please approach the table and the Major? Wingate? Sir. In the man's 1500 metres, who holds the Olympic record? 1500 metres. Uh, I've never run that far. I, it's not a I know you don't hold it. Do you have any idea who does, though? It was Kip Kano. What's the height of the hurdles in the men's 110 metres hurdles? Um, um, 90 centimetres. It's 106 centimetres. Would a hurdler be inhibited by short sightedness? No. As an optician, would you recommend glasses or contact lenses? For sports, contact lenses generally, yes. You are, in fact, an optician. That is very bad luck, I'm afraid. Your cover's been blown. Oh, no, sir. No, no, no. I'm afraid it has. You'll have to report back to base for the moment. Thank you. Sidio? Yeah? If you're a sports correspondent, can you cast your mind back to the Montreal Olympics? Yes. Who won the gold medal in the ladies' 100 meters sprint? The East German girl. What was her name? Um, Rita That's it, Richter is right. What does a man's discus weigh? Um, two kilo. That is right. Yashenko is an international athlete of wide repute. What is her event? Um, hurdles. I'm afraid she is in fact a he, and he's a high jumper. As a nurse, did you ever have to carry out a sex test on an athlete? Yes. I'm afraid you have actually just blown your cover. <laughs> Would you like to rejoin your colleague back in the briefing bay? All right, Barney. What is the world record for the men's long jump? 29 foot, two and a half inches. Correct. Who holds it? The, um, Bob Bowman. Bob Beeman. Beeman. That'll do. Who holds the world record for the ladies' 5,000 meters? It's a Russian, and it's T. Kamenenska. I'm afraid no ladies compete in that event. As a jewellery salesman, are you ever asked for jewellery with a sporting motif? I'm not a jewellery salesman, so I'm never asked for jewellery at all. I see. What is the nationality of Irene Shvenska, the 200 metres and 400 metres sprinter? East German. 
Well, actually, it may be my pronunciation, but she's Polish. Um, it's um, possibly your pronunciation, though. <laughs> How many water jumps are there in the steeplechase? Uh, there are seven. That is correct. Given the chance, would you consider packing up jewellery, uh, selling jewellery and becoming a sports writer? I'm already a sports writer. I might consider going the other direction and becoming a jeweller if there's enough money in it. That seems to be pretty reasonable. You've just about convinced me. Would you like to join your colleagues back in the briefing bay? And we'll see how your mission ratings are looking. And at this stage in the mission, our computer is telling us that the ratings are as follows. Agent Barnett leads the field with a rating of 37. Agent Wingate has 28. And Agent Isidio has 17. Before our three agents can go into the field, it's necessary for them to penetrate the disguise of this well-known undercover agent who has recently brought us up-to-date intelligence. If you think you know who it is, keep it to yourself for a couple of minutes when we'll return with The Master Spy. The building contains photographs. Intelligence, manifest. You get it laced up for showing, will you? Certainly, Major. It was brought to us by an undercover agent who is so well-known, it was necessary for him to adopt an elaborate disguise. Our three... Special agents will have to try and unmask their willing ally. Good evening, Agent X. Good evening, sir. Now, you may ask as many questions as you like, as long as they require an affirmative or negative answer. You may not ask his name. If you think you know his name, write it down on the pads. For every affirmative answer you get, you will increase your mission rating by one point. He's all yours. Are you a man? Yes. Are you a sportsman? I... Yes. Do you run? Yes. Are you English? Yes. Do you run in short, in short distances? Sometimes. Have you won a gold medal before? Um, sometimes. Was it in Munich? <laughs> no. Uh, Have you participated in the Olympics? Yes. Did you win a gold medal in the Olympics? No. Do you uh, run in the 10,000 meters? Sometimes. Do you compete in the 10,000 metres at Olympic level? Yes. Have you done so in the last Olympics? No. Or the one before that? Yes. Are you the one that missed the gold medal last... I think it was last year, so... No, no. Right. Now, if you haven't already decided who it is, now's your opportunity to make an intelligent guess. Our experienced undercover agent did a pretty good job. You could have done well to sort it out. Mm -hmm. Now, this is always, the department is always looks forward to these moments. Wingate has chosen an actor called David Hemming. I have a feeling he may have confused it with a hurdler called yes. Hemery. Ah, that, yes, I That's think. right, yes. One hurdles and one acts. Asidio has chosen Crawford. Uh, is there a Christian name? Um, yeah. Foster, Foster. <laughs> Isn't he uh, West Indian? I'm just no. looking at the makeup. No, no, he should have been Foster. <laughs> what? It's, it's um, that Foster, that boy that only went for... Ah, Brendan to... Foster yeah. as opposed to Crawford. Yeah, sorry, yes. I was thinking about the other two. <laughs> I see. No, 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 I, I like that kind sorry. of... You're so feminine, the department needs you. Uh, Barnett has actually chosen Brendan Foster. Yeah, that was what I meant, Foster. Yes, I knew I you meant it. Of course you did. <laughs> now, we have this opportunity for our undercover agent to actually show who he really is. This may take half an hour while Fagin changes into a young, virile, good-looking, dark-haired, young... Indeed, David Bedford is eventually a <laughs> going to appear when we get all this off. Well done. Well done. That was excellent. In fact, his 10,000 metres European record, I believe, still stands. That's right. You yes, modestly I'm allow yourself to admit right. to that, don't you? Yes, yes, that's right. Thank you for that extracurricular activity. More in a moment. In the meantime, we'd like to see the film he's shot. So would you turn around and face the screen? And I'd like you to listen to everything you see and hear.
Look closely at this postman crossing the road. The first thing you should know, he's not a postman at all. He's Ferdy Kleins, one of Anarchy International's top intelligent men. He's a difficult chap to follow because of his amazing speed and changing from one disguise to another. Just keep your eye on him for a moment. Yes, that's him, a postman no longer. I've been detailed to keep tabs on Ferdy's movements because he's known to be a link man in the plot to steal the laser beam projector. Don't let board in that bus fool you. Hmm, from a city gent to a working man between bus stops. Not bad, even for Ferdy. Notice the brazen way he gets a time check before he goes into the shop. When he comes out just as Jolly Jack Tar, even the man who told him the time is none the wiser. You've certainly got to be persistent to keep track of him and it goes almost any lengths to throw you off the scent. that one I'll never know. It's obvious that he knows I'm on his tail and what's more he knows that I know that he knows. The trouble is if you let Ferdy out of your sight for more than 10 seconds you don't know what to look for. He gets clean away. The man's audacity is unbelievable. I mean, how's this for sheer nerve? I've trailed him for miles, lost him at a pedestrian crossing, and then he has the colossal cheek to stop me for speeding in a built-up area. <laughs> right, would you like to turn and face this way, please? Well, that was an excellent film, David. Now, tell me, what are you doing at the moment? Well, I've given up serious athletics due to a leg injury, mm -hmm. and uh, although I still run for my club, I'm more involved in the other side of athletics. I'm chairman of the International Athletics Club and I fundraise for them. Yes, now raising funds for them isn't easy, is it? Well, it's not too bad. The public generally feel that, you know, our, our athletes, our sportsmen need a lot more help and always seem fairly prepared to give it. You are very attached to that moustache. Do you think it'll actually feature well, now? It caused a few problems, you see, when the lady tried to take it off just then. Um, <laughs> she did actually forget. <laughs> I know, she forgot you owned it. How very good to have you with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now to serious matters, to see how much you managed to take in from that picture. Two questions each to improve your ratings. Wingate, how was Ferdy Kleins dressed when we saw him boarding the bus? As a city gent. Correct. Now, how many addresses did we see him deliver mail dressed as a postman? Mm, three. It was, I'm afraid, two. Asidio, where did Ferdy Kleins appear from when we saw him dressed in workman's overalls? From the... from the bus. That's right, he got off a bus. At that particular moment, did he have a hat on? Yes. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Barnett, immediately prior to disguising himself as a woman, what was Ferdy Kleins wearing? Jolly Jack Tar Sailor. That is absolutely right. When he stopped Agent X to book him for speeding, from which pocket did he produce his notebook? His top left hand. Absolutely correct. Now let's see if that's reflected in your mission ratings correctly by the computer. Money Packer? Thank you, Major. And at this vital stage in the mission, the ratings are as follows. Agent Barnett leads the field with 50, Agent Wingate has a rating of 36. And that sound, I'm afraid, tells me that Agent Isidio with 30 must be eliminated from tonight's mission. Isidio, it is with a great sense of loss that we, for the moment, ask you to leave the department, but Money Packer will make certain that your journey has been worthwhile. Thank you Would you like to report to her over there? Agent Isidio, the department would like you to accept this rather neat a radio and cassette. And with the help of the two twin speakers, it should give you many hours of pleasurable listening. Thank oh, you for thank all your you wonderful efforts on this mission. Thank you very much. Uh, two agents are left to complete the mission from which only one will return. Your next stop is the Olympus Training Centre, where under your cover, 
as sports writers, you would interview the athletes who accompanied our missing courier on the flight from Montevideo. We believe that one of them has in fact got the blueprint of the laser beam. These are for your eyes only, your orders. You're to keep in radio contact with us, and good luck to both of you. Thank you. Control the sports scribe, over. Our two agents must be in transit. Yeah, have there been any further intelligence reports since their departure? Only that there were three athletes on the flight from Montevideo and that one of the events in which they normally participate is thought to contain a clue to the courier's coded message. Hot candle, we're back to that, are we? Mm -hmm. Which events were the three athletes concerned with? Well, that's the first thing our agents have got to find out. Right, patch us through to the training centre. We'll see what our agents are walking into. Yes, that is good, Peter. Approving all the time. Again. Uh, Volkan, could you spare me a moment in the equipment room? Luther, are you there? Yeah. Yes, I need to talk to you. Uh, close the door. Something in the window. Uh, yes. A couple of British sports writers are asking to interview the athletes who took part in the games at Montevideo. Who, uh... Who else was there besides the two of you? Uh, Martin, 400 meters. Uh, just the three of us, eh? Yes, I, I need to find him. Uh, be careful what you say. These uh, sports correspondents can be far too inquisitive. Uh, come through, come through. Oh, you're in luck. Here are the two people who travel back with me. Uh, Martin, Freddy's just gone to look for you. These oh. are the uh, two uh, sports journalists we've uh, been do expecting. Do? How do you do? Nice, nice to meet you. you. You're in London, then. How do you do? They want oh, to talk to us do. about the Uruguayan yeah. games. You Your are... time like the present. Okay, let's sit down over here. Yes. Would you like to come this way? Yeah, we're, we're trying to do a fairly in-depth feature of what happened there. Oh, yeah? We, we yeah. weren't able to make the games, no. unfortunately, <coughs> and it, uh, you know, we want to try and catch up oh, yeah, yeah. with as much detail as possible. Right, good. Um, now, you're, uh, you're Luther, is that right? Yeah. Yes. Mm. And what was your name? Uh, Wolfgang Richter. Richter, thank you. Let's get these facts right first. Yeah. And uh, what is your event, Wolfgang? Yeah, I do the high jump. High jump, yeah. And so you stick only on field events, are you? You're not on to track events at no, all? I do nothing but the high jump. Nothing but the high jump. Very well, too. And how did you get on? Hmm. I won the gold medal, thank you. Good. And Sorry, Luther, I didn't get your second name. Uh, Nielsen. Luther Nielsen. Yeah. How old are you, Luther? 30. And what is your uh, event? A decathlon. Catherine. So you're an all-round man. And the 400 metres of relay. Ah, oh, yeah, well, we're not talking about that, are we? I mean, you know. Well, but did you, okay. were you involved in the 400 metres? Yeah, relay? we had a little oh. trouble with the baton, you know? Involved, uh, yeah. yeah. Why, what happened? Oh, well, it uh, you landed on the deck at a certain point. Oh, so that's terrible. It changed yes. on the yeah. deck. Another day, another dollar. Yeah. And you're also, uh, therefore, in the relay. What, uh, are any other events? Well, my main so... event is the 400 metres. Ah, oh, Martin, there you are. Sorry, I could mm -hmm. find you. Now, you have finished your interview? Yes? Uh, we could do some more time. Yes, I'm sorry we can't give you no more time. We have to go to a meeting for the sports director in the canteen. Please, oh, now. right. Oh, sorry. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much indeed for your time. Well, thank we shouldn't be long. Yeah, we'll yeah. Perhaps yeah. talk later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what's yes. the... Control the sports scribe. You should now be in a position to complete your mission. Agent Barnett, as you now hold the highest current rating, the option to proceed is yours. Would you please tell us the event in which the three athletes took part? Or the events, I should say. Yes, Martin Petra takes part in the relay and the 400 metres. Mm -hmm. Luther Nielsen takes part in the decathlon and the 400 metres relay. Mm -hmm. And Wolfgang Richter takes part in the high jump. Now think back to the courier's coded message. What was it? Hot candle. Now, can you see a link between that and one of those athletic events? Um, I can in as much of a, a dropped baton. Could be mm -hmm. termed as something hot. What about Wingate? Yes. Uh, well, that was the conclusion I was coming to as well, but I'm just wondering... whether there was anything in the decathlon that might... 
that uh, Go on. might be involved. Yes, what made you think of that? Uh, well, things do get quite hot in the decathlon sometimes. It's an interesting uh, way you're getting there. Um, we... Are you going to settle for decathlon? Yes, I think I am, yes. You're quite certain of that? Yes. Yes, well, I think that's fair enough. You got to it by a diverse way. In fact, it is, of course, an anagram of hot candle, as you... I see that. Yes. You got that? I got that, yes. Right, now... Uh, would the agents now look round for another clue? In fact, Wingate, it's up to you to spot it. Um... Can you think of anything specific? Take over, will you, Barnett? Barnett? Well, it may be that baton there, yes. Uh, Barnett was just on the way. OK, Barnett, proceed. Gives me a clue, says, do you want me to read it out? Yes, do not. Do Blueprint in 29 degrees sector. Yes. Does that suggest anything to you? Yes, it does. What? Javelin. Very good. What are you going to do now? Um, have a look. This is a javelin, first of all. Urgency, urgency. Time is of the essence. We have very little time now. Well done, Barnett. It remains only for you to return the base with the blueprint, and your mission is complete. Agent Wingate, we're sorry you were pipped to the post. But if you'd like to look inside the small skip just in front of you... You'll find inside a superb music centre, which builds up into an attaché case. It includes a three-speed record player, a stereo radio and cassette player, all of which work off mains or batteries. The department would like you to accept these for your dedicated efforts on this assignment. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. That's absolutely true. Congratulations, Barnett. You have Thank justifiably you, claimed the title of the Master Spy. Thank you very Money much. Money Packer? The department would also like you to accept this really superb home entertainment centre. It has a cassette, a record player and a radio and two superb speakers. Thank you for your wonderful efforts. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. And it remains for me only to say thank you for being with us. And we hope you'll join us next time around for another assignment of the Master Spy. Thank you.